Hello and welcome to this week's Modern Toy Fair Reviews. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Storm Collectibles Big Bad Toy Store and Blue Fin exclusive Icy Armed Sub-Zero action figure. So let's go ahead and just get started. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at just the general detailing of the figure. First, we'll look at his face and his head, so you'll notice he does have those nice white eyes. He does have some like sculpted on and painted eyebrows. Got some wrinkling there in his brow line down towards his nose. You've got even some like stitching detail on top of his head and on the side. Just kind of showing you like that it's supposed to be like a fabric even though it's plastic, which is really cool. Uh, that also goes down to like wrinkles into his undershirt. You've even got some wrinkles with how tight his uh, gi is. And it's a little bit of a thicker rubber and then it does go down to almost like a tunic or a loincloth. And go over to his arm here you'll notice it does go from his skin tone to this really cool icy blue translucent plastic to kind of give him that iced over look, which I personally like. I think this is cooler than the normal version of the figure, but that's just me. And then also, of course, you do have his wrist gauntlets as well, which are that nice blue. And then his pants, you have that black. And then on the back of him, you have blue that also goes along with the back of his gi, which is still that thick rubber. And then go down to his shin guards you still have that nice bright blue with some detailing in it and then his feet do have the little ninja toe uh, marking in it and then as you can see his mask does come off and it has this like skeletal masked face which i think is just a way to use the same mold for both him and scorpion so just going to keep that on there On to articulation. So we're going to start off as always with the head. You do have full 360 left and right. You do have a little bit of up and a little bit of down. You do have a little bit of tilt to the left and tilt to the right. And then this is where it gets tricky with his torso. Because of how thick the rubber is on his gi, you kind of have to like hold his actual torso itself to get him to bend. But when you do that, you get quite a bit of range forward and even backward like still pretty nice so it is a little hindered because of how thick that gi is but i still think it's a uh, pretty solid and then if we move on to the arms you get roughly 90 degrees out got that bicep swivel you do have the forward and backward goes 360 it's a little hindered as far as being flush because of the gi again but still can get there if you try hard enough. Uh, you do have double jointed elbows, and then the wrists are a little wonky just because the fists are rubber, so they pop on and off real easy, but that also means that when you're trying to adjust them, they can pop off, so you kind of have to finagle it to get it to the right direction you want, but it does get quite a bit forward and back, and of course the 360 tilt. He does have butterfly joints in his shoulders, but again, the gi kind of messes with it. Uh, waist doesn't to do a whole lot just because he does have the rubber diaper under there and then he does have 90 degrees out and then forward and surprisingly enough even almost 90 degrees backward too. Again it's the rubber diaper is the only thing I think that's honestly stopping it and then oh let me readjust it kind of got caught there. He does have double jointed knees it doesn't have any sort of shin or ankle twist, but he does have the ankle ball joint pivot. So you can tilt all the way to the right, all the way to the left, and then it does have quite a bit forward and backwards. So, and then of course you have the toe joint as well. So overall, quite a bit of articulation, some hindrances over here and there, but it's still a pretty solid figure. Okay, so on to accessories. He does have a few sets of hands. So let's start with those. We've got these kind of flat, like, almost like karate chop hands, I guess would be the best way to describe them. They do have that nice translucent blue to them, so they go with the rest of his arms. And then we also have a pair of these kind of like grapple or like, I guess, even pointing fit hands. And those are pretty cool. Again, you've got the nice blue on the back of them and the blue translucent plastic for those. And then the last set we do have, it's just going to be a set of these little guys here that are gripping, which are just to hold on to some of his accessories for the most part. And then we do have one last hand, and this one's pretty cool. It's actually a, 
eye poking hand. So you've got two fingers poking with the blood and the eyes popping out. Uh, you can take it off. However, as you can see, the fingers look a little stubby, especially that middle finger. So it's best just to, to leave it on there. And then if we move on to accessories, do have a couple in here. First is going to be the blood effect, which this is cool in concept, but they didn't make it so like there's no magnets, there's no like, it's not form fitting, it just kind of rests there. So like if you move them at all, like see it just falls right off. So posing them with it is definitely a challenge. All right, and then next up we do have this kind of ice blast effect. It does come in pieces that you have to put together. Uh, as you can see, the bottom you might have to heat it up because it, mine it's kind of warped. It's very wonky, doesn't sit flat. Uh, it's cool in concept, but it's definitely a pain to try to pose them with. And it's, I don't know, it is what it is. Uh, this one's really cool. It's like a ice shield that's shooting icicles out. Again, another accessory that's a little bit of difficulty because you have these imprints on the back, and the hands go in there, and you just kind of have to get them to fit. And then, but the problem is the wrist pegs don't always bend the way you need them to for this to work. So like here is how the hands are on him, just normal. Like as you can see, it's a little bit of pain. Like they start to come off as you try to pose them. And like I can get them pretty close to flat, but even that's not great. So let me see if I can get this. Here we go. So if you do it just right, it's a little pain because he's top heavy. So you kind of have to let me finagle him here so he'll actually stand. Cause it takes a lot of effort to get these on here. So they, it does kind of stay. You can see the hands aren't flush against it. It's very much so just as fingertips are like holding this thing in place. And on both hands even, you can see the gap. And it's not terrible. Um, it's sturdy most of the time. I've had occasions with them where this is how it ends and then others where it just falls instantly. But the last piece of accessories is the, the best. It's the spine and skull, and it's done in the translucent blue to be all iced over, and it's super cool. I, I kind of like this better than the normal version. It does have the posable head. It does have the, the like movable jaw, so you can kind of do all sorts of different cool things with it. So that, that definitely is probably the best accessory in my opinion. Okay, so last thing we're gonna do is take a look at the box itself that he comes in. Do you have the Big Bad Toy Store and Bluefin exclusive stickers? You've got Storm Collectibles up in the top, Mortal Kombat, you've got Sub-Zero there on the front, and then on the side, you've got the figure posed, and then on the back, you do have more pictures of the figure posed of some descriptions, and then as you can see, it is the normal version on the packaging. They did not make special packaging for this one. Uh, a little disappointing, but it's kind of to be expected with this kind of variant. And then, of course, all the logos for the Storm Collectibles and Mortal Kombat and all that. And then Sub-Zero on the side again. You've got Mortal Kombat up on top. And, of course, you have the Please Don't Put This In Your Mouth information down the bottom with more logos. So, overall, pretty basic box. Same one you'd get with the normal version, just exclusive stickers on it and a cooler figure inside. I will say this is my first Mortal Kombat Storm Collectibles figure. And it's, it, it didn't sell me on, like, jumping into collecting these. They... It had a lot of different issues of posing because of the restrictions of the costume. The accessories were really cool, but they just didn't seem practical, and they were kind of hard mm -hmm. to finagle for posing and for pictures. So overall, I, I like the Street Fighter ones that they do a lot, but the Mortal Kombat ones, I feel like they almost need to step up their game a little bit on. But detailing-wise, this beautiful figure. So if you're into Mortal Kombat and you like this line, this is definitely a must for your collection. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this week's video. As always, if you enjoyed it, please make sure to like and subscribe. Hit the little bell to get notifications when our videos go up. We have Modern Toy Fair reviews on Mondays and Modern Toy Fair news with me and Jamar on Fridays. If you want to support the channel, there's a little link below for tpublic.com. It takes you to our store. We have all sorts of different shirts and mugs, phone cases, pillows, all sorts of stuff with our logo on it or just other designs that I've worked up in Photoshop. So feel free to give those a look. Also, make sure to check us out on social media. Twitter and Instagram are at Modern Toy Fair. We do currently have a giveaway going on, so also check out Modern Toy Fair News to hear more about that. Hopefully we'll see you next week, same toy time, same Toy Fair channel. Thanks for watching.